So, here we are, the end, uh, about near the end of the year, we've used up most of it. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we got who knows how long to look forward to. So, in the coming year, and who knows what's going to happen. Not me. <clears throat> and uh, I'm kind of one of them kind of persons that. I just kind of go along and um, I've never been accused of being a good detective. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> today in my scripture will come out of Titus chapter 2. <clears throat> and the interesting thing about Titus chapter 2 is the first half of this scripture is where it commands the older women to teach the younger women to love their husbands and their children and to keep house. And some people say that there's no scripture in the Bible where it tells the, the wife to love the husband, but um, I argue that with the first part of Titus chapter 2, where it says, teach the young to love their husbands. <clears throat> it's kind of a lost art. I, I mean, now now what they're telling everybody, even young kids, is that, oh, just do your own thing and however you feel is fine. Well, it's not. It's not fine. Uh, there's a, a right and a wrong. But I want to pick this up in verse number 11. And I will be reading out the New Revised Standard Version. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. And now I think the King James says to all men, but it means all. It doesn't leave women out. It, it means all. Training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. In other words, to stay away from sin. While we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, as Linda was talking earlier, you know, when she read out of Revelations, just one God. There ain't a half a dozen of them up there. Just one. Just one. He who... he. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Lord, we just thank you for your word that gives us guidance. I pray, Lord, that we might glean a little more from your word today to take with us into this new year that we might be the people you've called us to be and a little more pleasing to you. Amen. Amen. You. Verse 11 says that, <clears throat> some translation says that, uh, he has given you grace. Um, and let me read that again. Uh, the grace has appeared to, to all. Um, grace is, is an acronym. And I never can remember, I never keep it straight, whether it was Charles Stanley, Stanley or Chuck Swindoll said uh, grace means God's richest at Christ expense a funny thing about grace you you can't earn it you can't buy it you can't trade it the only thing you can do is accept it it is a gift Romans chapter 6 tells us that uh, the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the gift of grace. Yes. 
The Bible says, by grace are you saved. Not of your own doing. If people could do that for themselves, they would be working towards that goal. But they don't. They can't. You can't earn your way into heaven. You can't earn salvation. You have to accept salvation. <clears throat> Some people say that uh, not the gospel hadn't been preached in every corner of the world yet and that some people don't know they might not know all the ins and outs and all the details of the gospel but Romans chapter 1 says that the invisible things of God are clearly visible by what you see right. that's verse about 18 18 and 19 and 20 tells you that that they, what you see, lets you know that there is a God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And it goes on to say that they would rather worship the creation rather than the creator, the one who made it all. They set up idols of, of man and, you know, I think of that little Buddha statue with that. Looks like he just got through eating. Or uh, I think about in, in Exodus when they made the golden calf to worship. They worship birds and all kinds of things that they set up. The Bible says don't worship them things. It says, worship the one who created those things, the creator. That's what you need to be worshiped. And the Bible goes on to say that it's revealed to them. They know better, and they are without excuse. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that we're supposed to buy the truth and sell it not if you're washing the creation and not their creator then you have sold the truth you've got rid of the truth you've traded that off you no longer have that truth and we're commanded not to sell that truth and what do you buy that truth with Romans chapter 12 about verse 3 it says that we're all given a little measure of faith. Yeah. And you use that little measure of faith to buy that truth. What you believe in is what you buy with that measure of faith that you're given. Hallelujah. You're freely given that measure of faith. And when you come to the knowledge of truth that Jesus Christ came to the world... The purpose of him coming was to be our perfect sacrificial lamb that he would gladly, willingly give his body and shed his blood to take away the sins of the world. And when we accept that great sacrifice, that's the gift of grace that translates us into his kingdom. Matthew 28, 19 tells us that when we receive that and we become disciples of Christ, it says for us to go out into all the world preaching the gospel, teaching what he has taught us and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That, those aren't names. Those are descriptions. How in the world are you going to fulfill that commandment unless you know what that name is? That comes with the gift of grace. When he makes known his name unto you. My, my kids might call me dad. My grandkids might call me grandpa. My wife might call me mud, or I mean honey. <laughs> Her husband 
And all that is true, but that is not my name. Those are descriptive titles. And by the grace bestowed upon us by Jesus Christ, we learn the name. Because it says he has given a name that the whole family on heaven and earth are called. That is the grace that he gives us to welcome us into the family of God. In, in Corinthians chapter 11, which we read before we took a communion, it says when we come together, don't come together to um, belittle each other, more or less, but to strengthen one another, to help one another. Because when we receive grace, then we are supposed to bestow grace on others. We're supposed to act Christ-like. That's what Christian means. It means a follower of Christ, that we act like Christ. There's other religions uh, in the world that might teach you to be nice or, or want you to be nice. But Christianity, to my knowledge, is the only one that says, the guy at the top being Jesus Christ, that says, do as I do. The rest of them say, do as I say. Christ says, do as I do. And his commandments are, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, to love your neighbor as yourself, and to love one another. Yes. He says, that's how people know that you are my disciples by the love you have for one another. Right. And that comes through the gift of grace. Yes, Christ. Thank you, Lord. You can't buy it. You can't bury it somewhere. You can't. All you can do with grace is accept it and, and use it. And not to get rid of it. Just to exercise it. When you... Um, faith is kind of a funny thing that kind of comes with grace. Because the more grace you receive, then, then with grace comes love and with love comes faith. There are certain things about faith that are meant to grow your your own individual faith are meant for you. Uh, John 15 talks about the vine and we have to be connected to the vine but it, it, in order to produce fruit. But it also says that he gives us a pruning. And John 15 says though the branches that don't produce fruit he cuts them off and throws in the fire. And you're thinking, well, you know, okay, I'll just produce a little fruit and I'll, I'll be saved from the fire. No, he says uh, when you do produce fruit, he's going to prune you up. That's not always comfortable. But that's meant to grow your individual faith. However, there are things that come along in your life. Like in Esther, the book of Esther, when Haman wanted to kill all the Jews. Like Matthew 2, when, when Herod ordered the, all the babies to be killed from two and under. Uh, 
when things of that magnitude come along, those are not meant for your individual faith. That is a faith battle that you're not supposed to face alone. Find other believers that have the gift of grace bestowed upon them that you might receive deliverance from God. In the year that's coming, who knows what's going to happen? I don't even know what, what I'm going to have for lunch. But I do know that as God told Paul that his grace is sufficient for all. Amen. Father, I just thank you for the gift of grace that you bestow so freely on all who would receive. Lord, help us to be open to your gift of grace. Change us, Lord, from the heart that we might be more like you in the things we do, the things we say, our attitude, our actions, and our thinking. I pray, Lord, that you will guide us throughout this coming year to help us not only to know your will, but we pray for strength that we might carry out your will and be more pleasing to you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.